we don't like the idea of faith and we feel like it's anti-science and we're going to put all of our energy into destroying it. And once we get close to destroying it, we're going to lament that having destroyed it, we also destroy all of the good that it brings into society. And six, Richard Dawkins, who is one of the new atheists who aren't so new anymore. He put out his book, The God Delusion. I have a little bit of a summary of The God Delusion here. In The God Delusion, University of Oxford biologist and anti-religion activist Richard Dawkins seeks to demystify religion and discredit faith. He explores the unlikelihood of God's existence, how evolution by natural selection explains the centrality of religion to the human experience, and how religion promotes immoral values, impoverishes the human mind, and provides justification for intolerance and persecution. Here's the key. He argues that ultimately, like here's the point of his book, ultimately we as humans must free ourselves from our self-imposed shackles by destroying faith and religion and positively embracing the full potential of our species. All right, so pay attention to that. He argues that we have to free ourselves from self-imposed shackles by destroying faith and religion Bruh. and positively embracing the full potential of our species wow. so that is what richard dawkins wants to do and between him and christopher hitchens and sam harris and many other uh, of these new atheists who took control of just understanding the internet and the platforms that were available got huge publishing contracts and led millions and millions of people out of faith and into atheism or agnosticism and man these guys were sharp and they were cunning and they have like great video clips where they just are destroying people and they make belief in Jesus sound like the stupidest thing imaginable. And in large part, the new atheists have got a lot of what they set out to do. They've been very successful and we have moved further and further away in the West from our Christian heritage. We once were thought of as kind of a Christian nation. I make the case all the time on the podcast. We are no longer Christian. We're no longer post-Christian. We are now at least pre-pagan, we're beginning to worship things like sex, sexuality, and power, as well as nature. Probably the dominant religious force is, is worshiping nature and giving sacrifices and homage to nature, to nature and to climate. So they got what they want, and now they don't really love the results. And so Dawkins went viral this last week for calling himself a cultural Christian. Let's take a look at that. that we, we are culturally a Christian country. I'm, I call myself a cultural Christian. I'm, I'm not a wow. believer. But there's a distinction between being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian. And so, you know, I, I love hymns and Christmas carols, and um, I, I sort of feel at home in the Christian ethos. I feel that we are a Christian country in that sense. Uh, it's true that statistically the number of people who actually believe in Christianity is going down, uh, and I, I'm happy with that. Bruh. But I would not be happy if, um, for example, we lost all our cathedrals and our beautiful parish churches. Um, so I, I count myself a cultural Christian. I think it would matter if we certainly if we substituted any alternative religion, that would be tr truly dreadful. It would be truly dreadful. Now, what did he want in 2006? We as humans must free ourselves from our self-imposed shackles by destroying faith and destroying religion and positively embracing the full potential of our species, which you can infer the full potential of our species can only actually come if we are able to fully destroy faith, all this blind faith and all this nonsense and all this religion. So the new atheists push for a godless society and now are appalled by many of the results from their success and a lot of these guys you know the the four horsemen of atheism who came out in the early 2000s a lot of these guys now are extremely dissatisfied with the way culture is shaping up number one they almost astronomically overestimated how people would be able to fill the gap that faith plays in their life and the need for people to have some kind of a redemptive impetus in their life, like a transcendent God who does set moral objectives for us. And what's frustrating is there were Christian apologists and Christian scholars who were debating these guys and saying these exact same things. If we go for atheism, then we have no objective grounding for morality. There's no Christian scholars who are saying that an atheist can't be moral or that there aren't, uh, there aren't atheists who live even better moral and ethical lives than some Christians do. Nobody's saying that. What we're saying is on atheism, you cannot objectively ground morals and ethics where it's like right all the time regardless of situation.
You need something transcendent for that. And so if morality and ethics just comes down to your opinion versus my opinion, then really you don't have morals or ethics. You just have opinions and whoever holds the most power will win. And Dawkins is now dreading the idea that instead of a Christian culture built on the foundational teachings of Jesus that has shaped especially the Western world into what it is today, that it will be replaced. And he says that could be dreadful. And so it's not working out. The other thing they greatly underestimated was the religious impulse inside the heart of man. People will worship something. They have to. This is Carl Jung's point that everyone has a hierarchy of value. And at the top of that value, you might as well call that your God because it's going to be the thing that orients your life. And when you actually remove God, the God of scripture from that equation, whatever you replace it with will be less than, and ultimately it will not be satisfying. And ultimately it will not fulfill. And it can't actually lead you to a purpose that will be meaningful and impactful in your life, even if you achieve your goals of your highest value, maybe that's wealth or status or power or sexual attention, whatever that is, even if you achieve it, you will still end up empty inside because it cannot speak to the purpose that you were created with. So there's all kinds of wisdom about this in scripture. Proverbs 14 says, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. And this is kind of where these guys were at. Some of them were biologists like, like Richard Dawkins, and he's looking at evolutionary biology and how he feels like it can just explain everything and we don't need a God and faith is a cop out and it's the God of the gaps and how really religion has just caused so much untold suffering. And there's so many rules that are bearing down on people. There's a way that seems right to him. And he pursued that. He became massively famous and wealthy off of that pursuit of pushing atheism out into the public sphere, decrying religion and faith at every turn. He was successful. And now it's like, oh, I mean, the, the metaphor of having sawed off the branch that you're sitting on is completely applicable to this situation. He, and what's so interesting is he just likes the trappings of it. He likes the cultural bedrock that Christianity gives him, and he likes the trappings. He likes the cathedrals. He likes the hymns. You know, a lot of atheists were probably very shocked to hear Richard Dawkins say this. I like the cathedrals. I would hate if all the cathedrals were gone. At the same time, in the same video, he says, less and less people believe in God, and I'm glad. Bruh. That's a good thing. It, it's so good. My work is successful. Less and less people believe in God. Less and less people have faith. Oh, but don't get rid. Don't get rid of the cathedrals, though. Wow. I mean, let's not stop singing hymns that would have never gotten written if people didn't believe that they were writing them to a transcendent God. I like the cathedrals. This would be like someone who spent their entire public career fighting against the NFL. They hate football. They think it's not worth it. It's a dangerous sport. It riles up the inner animosity of men and they were successful. I mean, more and more people were just like, the NFL is terrible. The NFL is unethical. It's immoral. We shouldn't be doing it. And the numbers just start draining and draining and draining. And then all of a sudden they come out and they're like, well, I mean, I don't want Sundays to not have football games. I mean, I like that rhythm in my life. I think it's culturally good. Oh, don't tear down the stadiums. I love the stadiums. They bring in a, a lot to the economies of the cities. That they're in. It's like, dude, you have been trying to poison this movement for decades now, and you're unhappy about the obvious results of your success. If nobody believes in God, there's not going to be any cathedrals. Like the disconnect here, the cognitive dissonance that is creeping in to the success that the new atheists have found is shocking. And it maybe should point us to some legitimacy. I think there are all kinds of cases to be made for Christianity. I do think there is a cultural case for Christianity. And this is partly what Jesus was talking about, whether or not his teachings are true. He says in Matthew 7, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Bad philosophy has bad outcomes. Bad theology has bad social and cultural outcomes. Good theology, the right things, truth, actual truth will produce good. And it has. I mean, you can just look at all of the things that Christianity has brought into the world and how it's completely remade and reshaped. Talk about it all the time here on the podcast. You look at that and it's like, 
we don't like the idea of faith and we feel like it's anti-science and we're going to put all of our energy into destroying it. And once we get close to destroying it, we're going to lament that having destroyed it, we also destroy all of the good that it brings into society and all of the ethical and moral clarity that it brings with us and, and all of the ways that it erased the lines and distinction that have separated people for almost all time. The new atheists pushed for a godless society and now they are appalled by many of the effects in society of their success. And we should really, really pay attention to that and wonder if Dawkins is a cultural Christian, is that enough? If people like the cathedrals, but don't like the God that it represents, the cathedrals will not stand. Ultimately, we will go the way of our beliefs. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you are subscribed so you can stay up to date with all new content. And if you want early access, exclusive content, and monthly live Q&As, make sure to check out patreon.com slash Clayton Tyler.